Outback Art Fair happens tomorrow and Sunday at Shiras Park in Marquette. And Ansley joins us there this morning with an up close look at some of the artwork. Good morning, Ansley. Andrew, good morning. Oh my goodness, there's so much incredible artwork that will be here this morning. Joining me though this morning is Cindy Engel and she is the organizer slash artist. You kind of do it all, don't you, Cindy? I try. <laughs> Give us the basic details of this weekend for Outback Art oh, Fair. Oh, this is our 24th year. Uh, we're down at Picnic Rocks where this will turn into Art City in a couple hours. Um, it's artists from photographers, painters, metalwork, woodwork, inventive things, um, our glass. It's just an awesome, awesome lots of fun. You know how many vendors will be participating this we year? We have 110 artists. Woo! And That's a lot. A lot of them have double, double booths, so we have about 150 booths all together. Will be incredible. Well, mm -hmm. we have artists joining me this morning. Mike, Mike, you've been, you do some really incredible stuff here. Basically, tell me what your business is. My business is taking historical artwork or pieces of history and making it functional again. Okay. So I like to call it functional historical art. And it starts out with an inspiration. So maybe a sign, maybe a crate, maybe a old label. And then from there, it just morphs into something that will become something that can be useful every single day and enjoyed every single day again. I love it. Describe this piece here. Let's just go through the line. This is a, a Cleveland Cliffs Iron Company themed table. Everything from the lampshade here that came off of an old outbuilding at Cleveland Cliffs to the danger sign that's embedded in epoxy in the tabletop to the dynamite casing. And then of course the iron legs that were made from the iron country here as well. Everything is Cleveland Cliffs uh, themed. Uh, this piece here is taking an old label um, from the 1930s. It was a fruit crate label from California, but it's just got great artwork and I made it into a, a coat I rack. I love it. And then this piece is an upcycled lamp. It used to be a heat lamp, um, also from around the 1930s, 1940s. I rescued it out of a barn, I cleaned it up, I repainted it and actually custom made a socket to put in here to make it into a lighting lamp. Um, all the lamp work that I do also has decorative cording with it and uh, rocker switches too, oh, so it's easy. easy on and off. I love it. Whenever you go out to find these pieces, what are you looking for? They're so unique. You know, I think it's like with any artist, you look for something that's going to call to you and inspire you mm -hmm. to create into something new again. So. Um, Anything that has a historical background as well as a certain look. Like I, with this lamp, uh, for instance, I loved the copper coloring that was there. I loved the GE um, mm -hmm. insignia on in the front as well as kind of the sunburst twisted um, metal that is the cage around it. So that really spoke to me and I said, man, that would look really cool on somebody's end table. It really would. Now, is this your first year being at this art fair? This is the second year. Okay. I just launched my business about a year ago, and uh, this is the second year, but Cindy, uh, I really thank her. She helped me get my start. Is, do you have a website or anything if people don't find you at the fair? I have a else? Facebook site, and I don't have a, a website launched okay. yet. But and was that called the Facebook? The, the Facebook site is my business site. It's RE and then colon 49855. Okay, Marquette zip code. There Marquette it is. Zip code. Re, <laughs> I know <yes>. that. <laughs> there you go. All right, Mike, is there anything else you'd like to say about your artwork or kind of what you do here? Um, you know, I, just to go beyond my artwork, I, I love uh, the variety that mm -hmm. comes to the show. And like I said, everybody gets inspired by different things. And I just love being able to walk around and see that it's not just me who's finding things, it's them. It's who's the finding 110 things. other exactly. vendors. <laughs> and they're, they're making really cool yes, stuff. So everybody incredible. needs to come out and just see the incredible variety that's here. All right, Mike, thanks for being with us this right, morning. Reporting live in Marquette, Ansley Watson, TV6 News. Thank you very much, Ansley. We'll check in with you again next half hour. Artwork and will line picnic rocks in Marquette this weekend at the 24th Annual Outback Art Fair. Ansley joins us again with more details about the weekend. Good morning, Ansley. Andrew, good morning. It is another big, big weekend for art. Joining me this morning is Jeff Hammond, and he is an artist yourself. Good morning. Good morning. So you come actually from McBain. Yes. And what do you do? Tell us what you're going to be showing off this weekend. Uh, this weekend up here, I've got rustic and nautical metal art. I own a welding and fab company. Uh, CNC plasma cutters is one of the pieces of equipment that I have in there. Uh, my my parents were both good artists, and I could never draw a straight line. <laughs> Me neither. It's know, fine. <laughs> and, and until I got a computer in my hands, and I realized I could take different computer graphics and place them together, and just start making scenes out of them. And that's basically what I've been doing. Uh, been doing it for 12 years now, and enjoying it very much. 
Okay, so what we're looking at here, you design it on a computer. Yep. And then you take what sheets of metal, and yep. how do you how do you cut them out then? It's cut with a CNC plasma cutter uses an electrical arc to actually pierce the metal. Uh, it's got in, got air pressure behind it, uh, and as it's cutting, it's it's blowing the design out as it's going. Wow, I love this one down here of the Great Lakes. It's actually I don't know, John, if you can get that or not, but you can in the sunlight. There's a, a tint to it. What is that? How did you get that look? That's that's called flame coloring. Uh, you take you you take a torch and use a cold finish material, and there's different stages that when you heat metal up, it'll change from a straw to a, all the way to a dark purple, uh, depending on what temperature range you're working with. And it all turns out different every time you do it. You know you can take and you can highlight different spots with it. It's beautiful. Uh, but no, that's. And then you have the stakes over here. Yeah, the garden stakes are just kind of a necessary evil. I end up with a little <laughs> scrap. Uh, after I cut out my big stuff, and even some scrap from my shop gets cut up into garden, garden stakes and uh -huh. yard stakes, things like that. I've got stainless steel ones. Uh, I like to tell the people who are buying the stainless steel ones, you know, you're making a lifetime commitment to that. Some people like to buy them and either take them home and paint them or let them rust, so I've got mild steel ones for that too. Okay. So. And again, what's your business called? Uh, this is Northern Michigan Metal Art. Okay, and you'll be set up right right in this general area? Yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of a land baron here. down here in the food court. So. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for being yep, with us. Cindy you. Engel, she is the organizer. Cindy, again, let's recap on some of the, the basic details of this weekend for Outback Art Fair. Well, the show starts at uh, 10 o'clock on Saturday morning and goes until 6 on Saturday. Sunday, we're here from 10 until 5. Okay, and so there's 110, 110 different artists? 110 different artists and just about anything you could want as far as art goes. Jewelry, pottery, wood, metal. And of course a lot of items. yummy food. Yep. Is oh, and lots of too, yummy so. food. That's an extra yep. added perk. All right, Cindy, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Reporting live in Marquette, I'm Ansley Watson, and we'll be back with more of your TV6 Morning News after the break.